I'm back out front of the landscape photography outing today and I wanted to talk about why the best camera that I've ever owned is probably my least favourite but we'll get onto that in just a bit when I found my first composition so let's head on the trail and see if we can make some nice waterfall shots today let's get cracking so we're in the Ogwin Valley today and I'm hopeful of capturing a few waterfall shots. It's a location I've been to many times but never shot these waterfalls here. There's always been something on my to-do list and I think today is the day for that. We've got some really nice calm conditions which should be really perfect for that. We've got the wonderful mountain range in the background. We've got Egon, we've got the Gliders and Truvan. Such a wonderful backdrop there. Absolutely amazing. So yeah, it's going to be a cracking day. Whenever I come here, I just like to take a minute or two just to soak all the the ambience, the energy, and especially this time of year when there's not many visitors, absolutely wonderful. The camera I use for the majority of the work on this channel is this, the Fuji X-H2. And I've got to say, for my use case, it's absolutely brilliant. It does absolutely everything I need it to do. In fact, I don't think there's much I would change about it. It's great for both video and stills. But the funny thing is, as a camera, it doesn't really excite me that much. You know, it just feels like an awesome tool that gets the job done really well. And I guess that's the only problem that I have with it, really. You know, it doesn't excite me that much. It's not sitting on my desk at home saying, pick me up, let's go out and shoot, which I feel is a bit of a shame. And I guess what I'm saying here, it kind of feels a little bit soulless. You know, it's just like a black box that does a really good job, you know. Now, I just want to say I really couldn't be without the Fuji X-H2. And just because it's my least favourite camera, it doesn't mean I don't like it. Quite the contrary, I absolutely love this camera. But we'll get on to the reason why it's my least favourite in just a bit after I've taken this photo. So, what a wonderful scene we've got here. I wanted to try to incorporate the water flow in the foreground with the mountain in the background try to compress the scene a little bit so i've zoomed into about 30 mil so i'm probably about 15 20 meters away from the waterfall itself and by zooming in a bit it just brings that mountain in i am going to try a wider shot closer to the falls itself in just a second or two but i thought i'd take this one here first and see how that comes out we've got that one telegraph pole which i will remove in post-production it's quite annoying really simple to remove that with the um, spot removal tool and uh, i don't mind removing things that are not meant to be there in the landscape if you like and it completely ruins the shot so yeah i'm going to take that out it's absolutely fine i'm going to put the three stop filter on and that's going to allow me to slow my shutter speed down so if i put the three stop filter on i can get my shutter speed at f10 down to about an eighth of a second and an eighth of a second that shows some motion in the water which is really nice i think you know if we freeze that motion it all becomes a little bit cluttered the scene is very texture heavy so just showing a bit of motion and movement within that water helps to you know calm the image down just a little bit but in the foreground we've also got some boulders which point down towards the waterfall there's a gauze bush as well with some splashes of yellow flowers on which is really nice Beyond the waterfall itself, we've got some vertical slabs of slate which point upwards, which I think help draw the eye up to the mountains. I really like the subtle colour palette. The overcast moody skies are quite nice too. And we do have some really nice diffused light. Pretty uh, perfect, I think, for shooting waterfalls. If it was a blue sky day, I'd be really struggling to control the highlights in the water. So having that diffusion really helps to keep this scene feel fairly calm, I think. Yeah, eighth of a second, two second timer on. Go ahead, grab this image now, and then I'm going to move down there and see if I can take a wider one. But it's going to be so noisy down there, I don't think I'm going to be able to do any piece to camera. So I'll probably put both images up if I do take another one down there. Yeah, what a beautiful place. Absolutely stunning. going back to cameras 
I think my favorite camera that I've ever owned as a stills camera is a Fuji X-T3. And I've still got it and I always grab that camera whenever I'm out on a walk. And it's one of those cameras that's got bags of character. You know, it's an absolute joy to use. And whenever I look at it, it just I just want to use it. I just want to pick it up. And I think that's a very valuable thing. So I would have actually gone for the X-T5 ahead of the X-H2 had it had a flip screen like the X-H2 does because I need that for filming these videos. You know, I just can't be without a forward facing screen. But yeah, I love the uh, tactile dials of the X-T cameras and I definitely miss that on this, the X-H2. Yeah, anyway, let's go and see if we can find another shot. So I've moved upstream just about 20 meters or so from where we took the last shot, looking back towards Egarn there, which I thought was really nice. But now we're looking down the valley and we've got the water flowing from the left hand side down through the frame over the falls there and every now and again we get some dappled light down in the valley which helps show the sense of depth within the frame you see the sun just coming out now it's very changeable at the minute ranging my shutter speed between a quarter of a second and about a tenth of a second and that's just showing different amounts of motion blur within the water so just experimenting with my shutter speed i think it's always good to go back with options so i wouldn't necessarily always just shoot a specific shutter speed when I come to a waterfall. I probably like to have a lot of different variations. Sometimes it's quite difficult to see the motion blur on the back of your screen. You know, LCD screen is only very small, isn't it? So actually, you know, taking it back and looking at it on the big screen, it's great to have options in the edit. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Experimenting. Still got the three-stop filter on. Light levels are still fairly low. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of was seeing this. This valley is beautiful, real steep sweeping sides and the view out across towards the sea there. You can't see the sea today, you can sometimes from further up on the mountain range, but yeah, absolutely beautiful little spot here. Still really enjoying it. Right, let's go and take this photo. Currently, this one is gonna be at an eighth of a second, F11, I say 125, focused about in the middle of the stream there, gets everything nice and sharp. Two second timer. Please allow me to mention my landscape photography ebook all about how I compose my photos. The PDF book has over 120 pages and 200 photos that show my thought process from finding a composition to finally pressing the shutter button. I'm sure you'll find it a great read and it is the best way to help support my channel. If you do fancy checking it out, there is a link down there in the video description. So, as I've got the place to myself, I think I might have a go at the classic shot of Ogwin Falls with Trivan in the background. Why not? And I decided to go for a vertical composition here. You can take a wider frame from a bit further down on the right and incorporate the bridge. However, you then introduce the cables and telegraph poles and it is a bit of a cluttered scene. So I've gone for a vertical shot just putting half a Trevan in the frame, the pine trees up on the right hand side and a flow of water that comes down. Now I have got a circular polarizer on and the reason I put that on is because there's a big slab of rock on the right hand side and it's very very dark but it's catching the light and it's obviously the light's reflecting on it is quite light and that draws the eye to the right hand side of the frame and I don't want that to happen. So by putting the polarizer on it takes the glare off those slippery rocks darkens that area down and helps to keep the eye going up the scene towards the mountain in the background. Three stop filter on as well which is giving me between a tenth and about a quarter of a second depending on the light so again that's allowing me to experiment with my shutter speed focusing bang in the middle of the frame gets everything nice and sharp at f10. So yeah I'm going to go ahead and shoot this image now while the light is absolutely beautiful right now. Yeah, fantastic. So 
So I guess my point about my camera I'm trying to make is that I think the way a camera looks and feels is really important. For me, it's not just about what it can do, it's the feeling that I get when I'm using it that's important to me as well. Anyway, just a few of my thoughts for what it's worth. And if you enjoy this week's outing, be sure to check out this video up here, you might like that too. And if you fancy checking out my landscape photography ebook, the link up there will take you to that, and it's also down in the description too. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Anyway, if you'd like to see more content from me, please do like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all again next week.